Hi, everybody, and welcome to AppRight 101. Today, we're going to be logging in and signing up and whatever it takes to get into the AppRight console, and we're going to take a quick tour of the features that are there for you. If you take a nice look at our beautiful dashboard here, you can go to cloud.appright.io to get started or just appright.io and follow the documentation and look for the sign up button in the top corner. For now, we're going to dive right in and look here. I personally am going to sign in with my GitHub account because it is attached to everything that I do development. Now we're going to click, boom, here we are. So welcome to your AppRite console. Your AppRite console consists of very, f quite a few little things here. One of them being your projects. These are all the projects that you're going to have, which should be a ton of them once you sign up for the free plan. The members, these are the people who are allowed to come in and work on your console as well. And then your settings, well, your settings. So you can rename this to whatever I want to. We can name it to Pluto. Let's update it. Boom, now I am in my organization known as Pluto. First thing we're going to do is check this out. We're gonna to go to uh, create an empty project. Yes, we can import a project. It's very experimental, beta, whatever you wanna call it. And today we're going to call this, hello, mm, let's not do world, let's do hello, Pluto. I'm gonna hit create. That's gonna drop us right into a getting started guide, which is always amazing. Right here, we're gonna be able to add a platform. So where are you going to be, where's the end result or the user experience going to live? Or is it going to live on the web? Is it going to be on a desktop or a mobile app? This is where you make those, those choices. Even if it's server side, we can hook into that too. We're also gonna give you insights into the projects and how it's performing the bandwidth the API calls that you're using, all the things. And if you see it blurred out right here, you can also see where you're going to get information about your database, your real-time connections, and all the other magical things that we can express to you about what's happening in your AppRite project. Followed by that, once you create, we're going to dive in. We're going to do web here. We're going to say planet. Yes, it's a planet, Pluto, right here. And we're going to be developing on local host. That's all we got to do there. Click next. Boom. Right here, it's going to start walking through the process of which we're going to add it to our project. Now, I'm a React guy myself, so this per work works out very well, including the usage of Vite, which is spelled wrong. Next up, we're going to create a brand new, hey, this is how you create a new client. This is how you interact with the SDK. This is what you got to do to work with AppRite. Now we're going to click next as well here and you're going to see that we're all set and ready to go and that's going to take us right to our dashboard and there is all the insights and information that you need in order to make sure that your project is humming along on all the integrations and endpoints that are using it. Over here we've got our authentication. Here we can set up or we can create a new user. Uh, we can define teams that can be used from the SDK, what kind of security you want to take, how many users you're limited to, session length, uh, all of these things. Again, appright.io and go to the docs and get more information. We can go to templates this will help you set up your verification, your magic URL, your reset password. These are email templates. So whenever you create one of these and you send a verification or email verification to a user, this is what they're going to see straight from here. You can also set up your own STP server setting. So I could set up my custom one here if I wanted to use my personal email server. Up next, we're going to go to usage. This just shows all the things and how they're being used for authentication. So registered users, when users created and how many users are reading, writing and doing all the things that users do. And then we're going to go over to settings and you can see here that we have various methods. We've got team invites. We've got JSON web tokens, magic URL, phone, email, all the things, including anonymous. And here is one of my favorite things that still to this day makes me smile. And that is all of the OAuth providers that we allow. And all you have to do is pick one out. Let's say I want to go over here and I want to say, hey, Wes, let's go to Yahoo because I didn't know that was still a thing here. And then I'm going to enable it and I'm going to enter in the app ID when this is the app that you get from, oh, look, convenient documents put everywhere for you. If I click here and we go over and look, boom, here is your Yahoo developer authentication flow and server side information. Once I create that application here, I'm going to go and enter in my Yahoo app ID, my Yahoo app secret. And then right there is the URL for the callback. I will click update. I don't have one, so I'm not going to do it now. I will click update and boom, I am now enabled and I'm now allowed to have my app web, mobile, what have you, use Yahoo to authenticate. Now, Wes, can I have more than one? Yes, you can enable every single one of these if you want to take the time to set up an application for all of them. And we are adding more all the time. That is authentication. Now let's jump over to databases. Database is one of the most important parts of AppRite. Here is where you'll create your database. Your database is what you're going to use to store all of your information from 
images that you upload to or information about images that you upload to i don't know records where a user's timeline if you're creating a twitter their latest tweet or x post or yeah whatever so here we're going to create a database name called pluto uh just like the same name of it i'm going to give it a you could either leave this blank and it will generate a magical long beautiful id for you or you can enter in your own so let's hit create let app right create that there it is right there we just created a database now database will take you into collections collections are the tables or the organizational structure that holds your documents it defines what a document is and we will be diving into databases collections and documents way more in the following video up next we have functions these are serverless functions these allow you to create a function on the fly using various languages bun ruby bun is a runtime for javascript if you didn't know. uh ruby dart php python node.js i can come over here i can use one of the templates that we have i can create a prompt for chat gpt to a discord command bot uh, i can also connect a github repository to my function and that will allow me to when i push it will deploy and it causes all the magic now a serverless function allows you to interact with and extend and customize what AppRite is capable of doing. So past the core unit of AppRite, you could also add your own functionality to it using serverless functions. Up next, we have storage. Storage buckets. Buckets are amazing. They're like folders on your desktop. We create a bucket. A bucket here can be mm, citizen photos. Boom. I just created a bucket. A bucket is where we put all of our files, all of our details and all of our information in there. And you can see here, we can see how many total files and other usage that's going on. Now we have settings, enable it or disable it, give it a name, add some permissions to it, some security. We can encrypt it. We can antivirus scan it. We can compress it. I mean, there is so many things to do. And guess what? In a subsequent video, we will also be diving into storage. Now go back to the overview, go back to your settings. Look, here is where in your settings, which is right down here in the bottom, we can go over here. We can change the name of our project. We can enable, we can turn on and off various services. So maybe you don't need anything but authentication. Guess what? We got you. You only need database. Cool. We got you there too. We can even allow you to install onto one of the source code repository hosting companies and you can connect the repository right to it for your function settings. Global variables. These are your ENV variables that can be used throughout functions within your project. You can transfer a project from point A to point B uh, and we can delete our project. That's the danger zone right there. Also, it gives you your credentials and your endpoints, your project ID and so on. You can add a custom domain like I could have api.west.io. We can have webhooks, which means if something happens on AppRite, we'll call your web service on a different server or your integration for creating a webhook right here. Uh, webhooks to, to build integrations that subscribe to specific events on AppRite. So there you have it. Define one of those and where we're going to post that information to. Also, your migrations. We can import data. We can ex uh, export to a self-hosted instance from the cloud instance if that's what you choose to do. And here are your SMTP, which we've already seen. Here we can customize what our SMTP server looks like, or we can even create our email templates that people see. And with that, that's our super fast, quick overview of exactly what's going on in the AppRite console. Stay tuned for subsequent videos where we will go over authentication in detail, databases in detail, serverless functions in details, and storage and how to use all of these things. And I look forward to seeing more. So make sure you reach down there and you hit that subscribe button. If you want to enable the little bell so you're notified when I post a new video, do it. And we'll talk to you soon.